I thank you for calling me last July and asking me to come. I feel so honored to be here with all of you young people, and I am deeply humbled to be in the presence of these wonderful heroes. I can still get in. <laughs> Don't make my girl a sailor, the weeping mother said. Make her a whack or send her back to mother's arms instead. She's always been a home girl. She's never been to sea. A man in every port is not the life she learned from me. But I did become a sailor, and I want you to know that one of the main reasons I became this sailor was because of my junior high motto, enter to learn, go forth to serve. So think of my joy today when I entered this beautiful new school, and every place I look, there is my junior high motto. Now, my junior high has been torn down for quite some time, so the bricks and mortar are gone. But through each of you, that spirit lives on. After I decided I wanted to go into one of the women's services, I picked the waves, and I left for officer's training as soon as I graduated from Kansas University in 1944 and went to Northampton, Massachusetts to be trained to be commissioned to be an ensign. Few weeks before I was commissioned, I received a phone call from my parents. They said, say, we've had people phoning us saying the FBI has been around asking about you. What have you done? <laughs> and I said, I have no idea why that is happening. So the day I was commissioned, I ran to pick up my orders, and my orders read that I was to report to the Joint and Combined Chiefs of Staff in Washington, D.C. as an officer courier and administrative assistant. Very few people know what the Combined Chiefs of Staff were. They were actually the British. Now our chiefs, did not see the British except at the big conferences like, I don't know if yet in history you've studied of Potsdam and Yalta where Churchill and Roosevelt would meet and eventually Stalin. And that is where they combined with the British. But they constantly exchanged these papers that they were producing. So my first day of duty, I reported in with Sir Emerson Scott reporting for duty. And I was told by the Army Major that was my boss then, since this was the Joint Chiefs, see both Army and Navy were working together, that I would have my Jeep and my driver, a Sergeant Joiner that was in the Army. Now you can imagine, I'm just out of college. To suddenly be told you're going to have this Jeep and this driver, so I was also told that I would deliver these top secret papers all over Washington. Suddenly, I knew why the FBI had been around asking about me. Now sometimes we think as students, it doesn't really make a lot of difference what we might do until maybe we get a little older. But had I not have been somewhat of a good citizen going through high school, I would never have been given this assignment because the people they spoke to the most were my high school teachers. They spoke very little to my college professors. They might see me for one semester. Those high school teachers saw me, for the, we had a three-year high school, for the three years then that I was in high school. So then we ran these papers off for the chiefs. Now, this will be hard for you to believe. There was no such thing as a Xerox machine. I'm sure it hadn't even occurred to anyone yet. 